Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Good and Geeky, and today I'm having a look at that Stream Deck, which is a nice little pad that you get that's got 15 buttons on, or you can get one with 6 buttons on, or you can get another one that's got, I think, 32 buttons. I've got the medium-sized one, 15 buttons, and it's enough. And the reason it's enough just about is because you can have some of the buttons as folders, so like this one here, for instance, this is a folder, and inside that I've got other things going on. So I can get to select a line and put it on a clipboard, paragraph the clipboard, this one here is for doing some cleanup. If I click on that again, I can see what actions I've got in there. I've got um, command and left arrow key. Then this next one is the uh, right arrow key, so it takes it takes it one to the right. And then what it does, it does a uh, delete. And I did it that way because I couldn't get it to do a forward delete uh, within uh, the sh keyboard shortcuts. I needed to go to, to the right and do a backspace. And then finally what happens is there it takes the um, cursor back to the end of the line and it makes me ready to go to work again. So that's just a cleanup thing which I use when I'm doing uh, dictation on my dictation app which is Drafts. So what happens is in this case here for instance I've got uh, this here look. Um, there's a space there, an extra space. I don't want that extra space. I've got as far as dictating here and the space has been put in there by some strange sort of thing that happens in the application when this is going on. I don't know why it does it. I've tried, I've tried getting rid of it, but I can't find any way of getting it. So I've had to uh, get something to do a cleanup afterwards. If I press a button on the stream deck now, it'll do all of those things and put it right for me and put it into a proper header two on the markdown. Just go back to stream deck again. Let's go back to this uh, first one, which I started with, which is the spondicious one. And this is my default deck, this is. I've got it set as default, so anytime I'm not in uh, an application that has got a Stream Deck profile dedicated to it, it comes back to this one here. And I've got it set so that I've got this first one here, which is setting me up for doing dictation. So this one here with the green background and the microphone, that's for doing dictation in drafts. Um, then I've got a few emojis in there, so double click on that there. I've only just set up two in there so far, but I'm going to set up more. And basically all that does is put in some text and it puts in an emoji. So let's go back out of that again. There's two there I haven't set up yet. This one here goes into the uh, launch pad. I can do line to clip. Then what this one will do is if I'm, say, for instance, here in drafts, and I do line to clip, press the button, it selects it, puts it into clipboard. Gets it ready for me to put it into WordPress and so on. And then when I get over into um, WordPress, basically what I do then is I want to press no paste, no format, and it pastes it in. So uh, it's got three actions in there. Let's click on it again. So what it does, it goes to the bottom of the, um, at this one here, the art key goes to the bottom of the, the text. This one here selects to the top of the test, and this one here does a paste over the top. Oh, there we go. So if I go to this one here, I can do a restore. So if I go back to when it did a previous thing there, so let's go to this one here, it's got more stuff in there. I can do a restore and we're back in there again. So that's another reason why you should be using drafts because it does some excellent backing up as you're working. Okay, back to Stream Deck. The way that this one works, it runs a hotkey and the hotkey is a command plus this symbol here. Okay, so that's the, that's the symbol for it. I don't need the title in there because I've got a nice little background and a uh, microphone in there. And the way I've made that work is I use this ready to dictate in drafts keyboard maestro. And it does a similar sort of thing as I did with the multi uh, action thing in Stream Deck, except I've got it set up here. So I can be in any application whatsoever and it will activate drafts. That, that's, that's what this one does. Then it does the uh, command N to make a new draft. Then it does the command zero, command one, and that clears the two um, things at the side here. So this one here and this one over here. And then after that, it goes into option, command and nine, which is the keystroke I've set up to go into doing some dictation. It's all been set up into one button on the stream deck. So if I press the button now, header two, I am ready to dictate now, full stop. And you can see what's happened there is that uh, it's not done the thing properly there, like I was telling you about. And it's put in a space here at the beginning. Now what I need to do there is to press that other button that I've got on there. So if I go to the um, Stream Deck, if I, I can't change it on the... Um, it hasn't changed automatically to the drafts because I've got this open. 
So if I now go to this one here and go to drafts, and I've got the drafts up on this thing here, and then I can press on this button here on the Stream Deck itself. Nothing happened. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Press the button. Okay, so what it did then, it um, did the job there of going to the beginning of the line, deleting the space, and then putting the cursor back at the end again. So that's quite good. What else have I got for drafts? Sometimes I basically want to switch the microphone on and off without having to uh, do the whole sort of kick and caboodle with this one here. We're starting a new draft and getting things out of the way because I've already got those things out of the way. So this one here is to turn the microphone on or off. At the moment, the microphone is in um, sleeping mode. If I press it now, this one here, let's press the button and it wakes the microphone up. Also, I've got another application on here which I like to have available. I could go back to the default profile, which is the spondicious one. And I can do it with this one over here. That one takes me back to the default. Okay, so that's back to the default again. And I can get into day one through there if I wish. So that's one way of doing it. Um, what else have I got here? I've got my art applications. This is another one that sets up to um, get into the affinity applications to art text. Art text is really good for making the these things, these um, I. Okay, so let's go back into um, this one here. And as you can see, uh, this one here, I've actually put a nice little background in. This is a photograph I took of some graffiti before, and I wanted that one there. Um, let's see, let me show you how to do this one here. So let's um, line to clip. So you can see this is our icon, which is showing up on the stream deck. And I can change that by going to create new icon. Um, which brings you out to this. So it's okay for making icons, but you know, I mean, there's not really that much in there to be quite honest. And I'd rather make my own most of the times. Uh, what you can do is you can do something like uh, this one here, for instance. Um, say if you need a brush, click on images and I can choose a brush. I can take one of these brushes and I can drop it, drag it and drop it into the, um, the uh, icon there. Let me just show you how that works. Now if all I want to do is I want to take this brush here and put it in there instead of the one that's in the icon that's in there already. I can drag that and drop it in. And so now I've got a different uh, different little icon in there and that shows up on the uh, screens, the little screens at the buttons on the Stream Deck. And if I want to change back, that back to the way it was, go to this one here, create uh, set from file. So it's set from file. And it was, um, I forgot what it was now, I think it was line to clip, wasn't it? Let's choose line to clip, I think that's the one, and put it in there, and it's back to the way it was again. And so I've got the messages and applications. So session, signal, uh, these are the and three more, these are the ones that you should be using if you're looking to get away from WhatsApp because of the way that they're uh, trying to send your uh, metadata over to Facebook to uh, take more of your privacy away. These are the ones that you should be using instead. Okay, so and I've also got uh, messages, of course, in there, and I've got uh, FaceTime. So that goes into those, and then I've got another one here which goes into the writing applications. So again, I've got it set up for Dictator. Let's just change it while I'm thinking about it. Let's go to uh, Set from File. So there's the one I want. There's that one there, JPEG. Click on Open, and now it's the correct thing there. And this title here, this will come up in the um, on the button there. And if you've got a nice little sort of icon in there that's actually telling you what the button does, you don't need to have a um, thing in there. You can get rid of it by doing this and going through show title, change the uh, the title. You can have com Comic Sans in there if you want to. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. Or you can have Arial Black. You can have whatever typeface that you want in there. Or you can click on Don't Show Title. Or if you've got Show Title in there, you don't want to go through this uh, drop down menu here. All you've got to do is uh, select that and delete it. And that takes the title away from this one here. So on this one here, Ulysses, for instance, I don't need a title in there because I know what the Ulysses icon looks like. I can just delete that out of the way and it's ready to go. In this one over here, you've got to, when you first get started, this is the button to press on the top one in the corner here. And if I want to have things that to do with game capture on there, I can uh, click on those and I can have these in here so I can stream the game capture and stuff like that. I'm not playing games, so I'm not going to put that on there. Or if I'm in OBS Studio, I can take these ones from OBS Studio and I can have those and I can decide that I want to drag one of these here. So, for instance, I've got a scene that I want to have going in OBS Studio. Bring that, I could put that in there and that will bring up a specific scene. If I don't like that there, I can take it, I can just delete it. 
or maybe let's see let's get rid of that second um, maybe I want to have a soundboard in there so with soundboard I can do play audio two finger tap on the uh, magic trackpad I'm going to do copy this time okay let's go at one again this one here and I'm going to do a two finger tap on there bring up the right click thing and I'm going to go paste that's how to do copy and paste from one deck one profile to another the one I tend to use most often would be this one here hotkey and then we've got uh, Twitters in there as well so I can send a tweet and if I want to send a tweet then what I'd need to do is I would need to set it up so that so I've got the um, preferences so in preferences I can go to accounts and I can set this one here this is the YouTube one I can select this one here go to Twitter and I can tell Twitter to connect up to this one here I'm not going to do that now I'll do it to the later stage um, profiles once you've got your profiles in there you can move them around uh, so this one here I want screen flow I'll put that further up there I've got my mate in there and as you can see I've got it for the application that I use the most and I'm going to create more of these so this is a profile I've got for stream deck uh, when stream deck is open this one is the one that comes up I've got ecamm live if I want to do some live streaming using ecamm live Affinity Designer, I've got another one set for that and I'm going to set up another one for Affinity Photo because it's another application I use a lot. If I can't remember what the um, keyboard shortcut is then I'll put it onto the Stream Deck and that's as simple as it is. If I can remember what the shortcut is then I don't really need to do the thing uh, on Stream Deck. I can do it with the keyboard because the hands are going to be kept close to the keyboard anyway. And setting up new ones, just click on a plus there, got set profile one and I've done a um, two finger tap on the magic trackpad there and I can do a rename so I'll have this one ready for going into um, Affinity Photo I don't want to set it as my default profile and in this one here I want to set this up so it goes to Affinity Photo it's not in this list at the moment so I need to go to Other so click on Other so now every time I open Affinity Photo this is the profile that's going to pop up and show uh, all the buttons for me that I need to press to do whatever I want to do in Affinity Photo. Okay, so that's basically the way this works. You can set the brightness on the, um, the device, um, go down to dark so it's nearly nothing at all, up to sort of fairly bright. I usually have to set that to the middle there. Um, I can set it to go to sleep after an hour or after 15 minutes or 30 minutes. And there's also a screen save that you can use as well. I really love the Shroom Deck. I think it's a brilliant little tool to have on the desk. Um, mainly because there are lots of automations I've got. And I've got lots of different keyboard shortcuts. Some of them which I have coming from Keyboard Maestro Editor. Some of them which I've made up um, that are working Keysmith, uh, for instance. Some of them could be basic keyboard shortcuts that are from the system. I can't remember all of them because I've got so many of them. So basically what I do is I set it up so that I can have those specific ones available for me to just press a button on the Stream Deck. So I hope you've learned something from this. And so if you're tempted to get one of these Stream Deck, if you want to ask me some questions, don't send me an email because I like things to be encrypted. Send, unless you want to encrypt it with GPG or if you use Paranoia Text Encryption. Or what you can do is you can go to um, Signal. You can find me on there. You can find me in Telegram. You can find me in Session. That's a good one to use. And if you're on the Mac or if you're on um, iOS, you can also get me through Threema. Threema is a good little end-to-end um, -end encrypted messaging service, which is very good indeed. Okay, so this is Dave Allen for Good and Geeky. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye now.